And I'm Lee Remedius. And we're going to be commentators for tonight. First fight of the evening is Neil Barber from Manchester Ground and Pound against Terry Eatim from Afton Submission Wrestling. So it's Terry's professional debut tonight. Um, Neil Barber um, from Manchester Ground and Pound and I fought back in Ultimate Combat 4, I believe. Um, so um, he's experienced, but he's, out, he's been out of the cage for a little while. And. Well, well, he, he looks he looks pretty strong. He looks the stronger of the two fighters. Um, we've got top position. He got the takedown. Landed some good shots so far. But we've got to eat him looking for an armbar from the guard. Yeah, we've got, we've got some nice groundwork from eat him. Uh, oh, oh, he's he, looking he, for a triangle. He's going to take up a triangle now. Uh, uh, Neil needs to keep his head up there to stop him being able to lock it up. He, he's trying to get he's trying to try go out the back door, but I don't think it's going to work for him. It looks like he's it's going to get locked on. I reckon. Well, the, the triangle's slipping back off. I think Neil's managed to get his shoulder back in there. Our, our view a little bit skewed by the referee, but I think Neil's got his shoulder back in and he's back to safety. Oh yeah, yeah, we can see that now. Okay. Now Neil Barber I know a little bit about. I've, uh, I, I tra used to train with Manchester Ground Pound a few years ago and he's a good all-rounder. Um, fair, decent stand-up, uh, decent groundwork. Um, Terry eat him, I would imagine would have uh, Good clinch the, the 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 middle range with it being from Afton Submission Wrestling. Well, also, with his height, uh, you'd assume that he'd have some good submissions from the guard, which he seems to be using. Possibly some good striking when he when they stood up uh, using his reach. Um, but on the ground, I guess they're all the same size. Yeah. Oh, nice reversal. Yeah, he's been pulling up, uh, uh, managing to. So half get sweeps from the, since the start, but Neil's managed to keep the top position. This is the first time he's actually managed to switch it over, and we've now got Neil underneath. Oh, he's turtled. A fatal mistake, possibly. Now, but now they're back on their feet. Um, I think Neil would want to really get out of the clinch here, whereas um, I think Terry will probably maybe be a little stronger in the clinch. Neil maybe wanted to work his boxing. He has got quite fast hands, you can see, when he was there. As he was warming up before the, the fight started. Well, he certainly has some powerful shots on the ground. Well, Neil getting the takedown, good work. Nice little trip there. Back in guard. Terry's so good for his submissions very fast. Yeah, I think the first triangle attempt uh, made Neil a bit wary. And uh, he, he seems to be, be escaping the danger pretty quickly now. Yeah, um, it looks very good at um, throwing the strikes from standing, Neil. Um, work, working uh, from out of the guard, but a bit staying on his feet. Now, of course, up um, under these rules, um, he cannot kick to his down opponent. Uh, he, he can only punch to the head and the body. That's right. And whereas Neil, from standing, can come down and he can throw punches to the head uh, from standing. Terry, on the other hand, can kick Neil in the face while he's standing. Yeah, your opponent must uh, be on just as all his feet for you, for you to be able to kick him in the, in the head. There's a good right hand from Neil as he stood up. And got Terry looking for oh, a good team. Team. It looks tight. Oh, but he's out. Nice to get out. Uh, Terry looks very well conditioned. He's, quite, um, he's very lean. He's obviously... Uh, uh, Close, tight of the well, uh, Neil seems to slow down slightly. Um, I'm not sure if that's just from the. Uh, I'm not sure if that's from the uh, initial burst or from the uh, knees to the body. Yeah, the, um, Terry does look good with those knees from the clinch. And it, maybe it has bothered Neil because he's starting to come back knees to the body of his own. <laughs> yeah, Neil, Neil's looking a little wary and he's got caught with a kick to the head. Yeah, he's. His tie box is looking very sharp, so nice clinch, some nice kicks. He, he was kneeing very well. So far, I've been impressed with Terry all round. He seems to have good stand up, good, uh, he's using a tie clinch, when he's in the clinch or, or, or a variation to the rest of the tie. He's gone for a few good trips. Uh, Neil has managed to get the takedowns. And then uh, 
Uh, he's looked good on the floor of submissions. He's definitely a good all-round fighter and, um, and impressive for a pro debut. Neil, on the other hand, um, he, he looks strong uh, in the take. He's got the takedowns in top position and those strong ground and pound. Yeah, he, he, does, he doesn't power any shots, for sure. But Terry's looking sharp here. He needs to close the distance down as well, I think. This shows how good um, how good Terry is because Neil has got good stand up. Um, but he's been picked off by the long sharp shots of, uh, uh, of Terry Aitin. Ooh! That was a big knee to the head at the end of the round. And I'm not sure they heard the bell there. <laughs> no, it's a, a great atmosphere in the Olympia. How did you judge that round, Lee? Well, Initially, uh, Neil got the takedowns, but I think uh, Terry's been looking to finish one more active towards the end of the round. I'd give that round to Terry. It, I think it was close, but I think Terry won that round. Yeah, I think uh, Neil was doing well with his, um, with his ground and pound. He was getting the takedowns, um, but he, he, he maybe just lost towards the end of the round there when Terry came on strong. Uh, Terry had the submission attempts, um, which Neil escaped from well, but he did get the nice uh, shots with his sharp stand up at the end. He got some good knees and a good uh, long right hand. It could still be anyone's fight, though. Um, we'll see how the conditioning uh, plays out. who's just uh, recently won the UK Storm title at Bantamweight. Um, and, and obviously Neil Barber. It's a good experienced corner, some good guys there. Yeah, I mean, they're all experienced fighters themselves, so like, they'll be telling them the right stuff, they'll be getting the right instructions and everything else. And obviously the corner is Atherton Submission Wrestling. A very experienced team. Again, yeah. Right. I mean, we, uh, there's a two experienced uh, teams being re represented tonight. Yes, although, I mean, they only have one fight previously between them. There's a lot of experience there. Yeah, these certainly aren't guys who just train in the garage. These, these are guys that, that wouldn't have been put in here unless they really had the skills to uh, to do it. And it looks like looks like they do. Yeah, it looks like Terry Steinway left off with some nice long shots. Neil needs to stay in close like he did in London. Just got caught again on the way in. But I think he's got a quarter left up of his own. We'll see a little bit of a difference because I, um, I think Neil stand up's predominantly boxing, whereas Terry's looked to be um, tired boxing, so he's mixing up kicks and punches and knees, whereas Neil will be looking for the punches. Yeah, I, that, that's, how it, that's how it's coming across. I think um, Terry in the strike will have the advantage with his clinch, uh, sorry, with his, um, with his reach, and uh, in the clinch he's got the tie boxing to throw the knees in. Right. Uh, Neil's back with a, a kick of his own there. And back in the clinch. It's been, it's been quite an action packed fight, this. It's, it's quite exciting to watch. Yeah, and if you look at this, I mean, the clinch, it does, sometimes it can look a little bit like in the clinch area, like the resting is the holding on, but the clinch, the working, maybe as hard as, I mean, you know how hard it is wrestling me with that. Yeah, I mean, it, it can be very, very, very tiring, and, and if you're getting hit as well, that, that's it. And the fight, constantly fighting for superior position. Yeah, the referee breaks him up. Oh, and we can see it. <laughs> as they refer to a mouse under Neil's left eye. That's right, that'll be from that long right cross um, of Terry. This is a, definitely a good opening fight for the crowd. Oh, nice nice uh, combination of punches and kicks there from Terry. Oh, oh and then a knockout. That was a massive, massive kick to the head by Terry Eating, finishes the fight. Was yeah, he was out before he hit the floor. Uh, yeah, the medics will be straight in. Um, the sa safety in these cases right, events is excellent. But the medics straight in to look after him. This is a, uh, just a precaution. Soon he'll be all right. Yeah. You'll, you'll see that the corner team will, will, won't get involved yet. They'll let the medics do their job. They're professionals and they, and they know what they're doing.
Kelly for the second fight of the evening. We've got Mohamed Adapar from Newcastle against Chris Morgan from African Submission Wrestling. What do you know about these two? Well, uh, <coughs> Mohamed Adapar is on the um, Great Britain Judo squad. So um, obviously we'll look for good conditioning and... Yeah, uh, not for him to be strong in the clinch. Oh. Yeah, some, some, some superb takedowns and ground control. Chris Hoban comes out with a strong right hand and then and now we'll see them in the clinch. Yeah, Chris Hoban's from um, uh, Atherton Submission. So he'll have good wrestling and clinch himself. This could be a, a good one. And how will that differ, the wrestling, uh, the clinch from a judo background being used in a cage uh, compared to the wrestling from, uh, from an actual wrestling background? Well, uh, judo, of course, is uh, practiced in a gi. However, if they uh, some big punches coming in there. The right hands were catching, but the left hooks were definitely co connecting there from Chris Holden. Well, um, oh, sorry, back to what you were saying. <laughs> back to the judo. Um, however, uh, if he's cross-trained, um, as he, I'm sure he has, it, then then the real difference would be uh, the, the, the judo will use more trips and sweeps, and the uh, Wrestler will have uh, more leg attacks. So, so far, definitely a, a good a good match in the clinch. Very close. Um, Mohammed just getting the takedown there. Uh, Chris, do you think he'll be wanting to break away and, and, and land some more of those strikes? Well, it certainly worked for him. So, uh, and to be honest, uh, uh, someone from the Great Britain Judo squad is going to be very, very strong in the clinch. Um, it probably won't be. Uh, Chris Holman landing some more strikes again. That's a judo trick of turning his back. Yeah, Even uh, when he had to lose position, he still managed to get back on top. Yeah, uh, he, he went for an Uchimada throw. He lost it, but counted, counted the counter and landed on top in the half guard. But uh, both guys went back to the feet. This looks like it being a draining for... Ooh, oh, a strong a, knee. Knee to the head, dropped him down there. Dropped, dropped to his knees momentarily, but uh, his good conditioning allowed him to recover. Sometimes be the problem with with judo if you, if they don't cross train. And judo players can can caught with submissions um, on the ground from the guard and other positions like this. Yeah, uh, well, I'll have to watch that now. But um, Mohammed's got Jeff Orton in his corner, who's a very experienced mixed martial artist. Uh, he's had fighters on uh, train fighters for a long time. So I imagine he'll be very well cross trained. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm sure. I'm sure with, with someone of that pedigree in his corner, he's, he's not going to be clueless on the ground. So he's, going to, he's managed to pass to a. So he's now in the half guard of Chris Hoban. Chris Hoban's using it, standing up. Do you think he'll get up? I think he'll manage it, yeah. Yes. And he's back on his feet, yeah. Excellent. And now we'll see if we're going to work on some punches. Great from both fighters. You see some real skill in the clinch, both in the clinch standing on the ground. Great match fight. Mamma needs to keep his chin down. He's coming up well there, so not take too many more. I noticed he's smothering Chris well, so that uh, Chris couldn't land any any big hip shots into those punches. They're mainly arm punches. That's right. You can only take so many. He did as soon as he started to get caught. He did get his hands up and his chin down well. He get caught again. I think he definitely wants to be uh, getting that top position. <laughs> <that ball. laughs> you know, Chris Holman doesn't want to get too carried away and leave himself too open. Look, Chris is laughing. laughing. He was laughing when he got hit. <laughs> He's got some big shots, Chris Holman. A great personality in the cage there. I think the crowd enjoyed that. He seems very similar to uh, one of our main event fighters tonight. <laughs> yeah, that's true. So here we've got Chris now in top position and working some big bombs. Yeah, I think Chris is starting to take over this fight. He landed some shots. He's, he's hurt Mohammed. And he's, now he's, he's the one getting the top position and landing, landing the punishment. He's looking to pass the guard right now. So how, how does the guard position work in mixed martial arts? Well, the, the player on the bottom is always at, at a uh, disadvantage in mixed martial arts. But the best place you can be if you're on your back is to use the guard, which is to put your legs around your opponent's waist, or at least use them to control his hips. So the guy on top wants to get past those legs to, uh, to get yeah. a dominant position. Yeah, start controlling the shoulders in, in a pin. 
and work your submissions and your strikes from there. We were uh, jockeying for position again in the clinch. Um, we've got Mohammed managed to put Chris back uh, with his back against the fence. Very, very uh, even position here. Both got one underhook, one overhook. Oh. Great first round. Think Chris Hovind just took that one? Yeah, uh, I, I, I think he did. Even though for the first half of the round, or possibly, possibly more, he was on his back, he was more active, more aggressive, and he, he really took over at the end. Yeah, he'll be wanting to get a win back after um, he lost on the last show. But a very, very good fight. Um, against a good opponent, and here we can see him coming back. He's obviously been working hard yeah, uh, it, for this one. He's wanting to get that win back in front of his home crowd. He's, ob he's obviously gone back to the drawing board, assessed, assessed his, uh, the, the errors he made before, and come back strong. And Mohammed had a point in his pro debut. What are your thoughts? Um, he looks. <coughs> I'd say that he's definitely he's definitely cross trained. He's got more than just judo behind him. Um, he might be a little in the deep end here. He doesn't look to be as used to striking um, as he possibly should be against someone who's hitting as hard as Chris Hoban. That does seem to me where the big difference is. The clinch and the ground look very even, but Chris is getting the edge on the stand up. Nice sound of respect there. They touch gloves. Oh, Chris straight out again, banging. Mohammed's definitely well conditioned. He's taking the, sh he's taking the shots, but um, I think. I, th I think he himself will lack striking power coming predominantly from a judo background, yeah. um, which will allow Chris to not be too phased by the shots coming at him. There's flashes here when watching it. Chris Owen does remind of a, of a little porker hoon, doesn't <laughs> A mini bulldog. <laughs> and here we are back in a clinch with Chris with his back against the fence. <laughs> referee breaks the action there. Yeah, very good referee, I think. Uh, this is a testament to uh, Mohammed's conditioning that he's taken these shots so well because there's some big bombs going in. He tried to shoot to avoid the uh, the shots and get the takedown, but uh, a nice ball by Chris. Now, for this fight, we can see Chris is wearing wrestling boots. Um, for the striking, he'll be able to get a, 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 a better strength into his punches, he's got a better grip. How would it affect maybe the grapple in the wrestling? And what sort of a game plan do you think uh, he's come in with? Where oh, he gets through a headbutt. And a little headbutt there thrown by Chris. It's easy to do when you get carried away. I know I've done it a couple of times myself. Um, I think, I think uh, Mohammed's going to get some time to recover here. But uh, he may look for a way out. I, I hope that's not the case. I hope not. But uh, to, to answer, answer the question on the wrestling boots, um, firstly, when it comes to kicking, obviously there'll be it, it, it'll be illegal for him to, to kick to kick certain targets with, with shoes on. Um, he'll have more traction for the wrestling. He'll have, he'll have uh, better footing, but he may be more susceptible to being leg locked. Yeah, it, I mean, I would have thought it was definitely a, a top position uh, sort of game. He's wanting to to strike and, and, and wrestle and ground and pound. It's not, they're not great for when you're on the bottom position. <laughs> not sure exactly what uh, Chris said then, but I think he was wanting his opponent to stand up and fight. <laughs> I felt a game of him, however, he is the one that, that, that made the foul. That's true, that's true. I mean, he, uh, the consequences of... Uh, uh, Crowd are getting a little bit, uh, a little bit vocal here. Matt Mohammed is re refusing to fight on. He was getting some punishment, uh, although the headbutt, ob obviously a blatant rule infraction. The home crowd here shouting, Chris Urban. So I think the, the result is actually going to be a disqualification loss for Chris Hoban, which is a shame when he was uh, dominating the fight so well. Oh no, no, they're giving him the win. Oh no. 
The game is opponent. You were right, they have disqualified Chris Hoban. It's a shame when the fight was dominating so well, because I know you can just get carried away. Um, and I'm sure he didn't intentionally eat, or he didn't eat him, but I mean, it was just uh, in the heat of the moment, it just, these things happen. Uh, both guys are making their pre pro debut here, um, but obviously we, we, we've seen a couple of fighters already from Atherton. Uh, from the Townsville camp, uh, Carl Townsville, obviously an experienced uh, mixed martial arts trainer, uh, pop felt, I believe, under uh, Matt Thornton from the FPGI. Right. Oh, some good action here. And we've now got uh, Andy Miles on the floor with Craig Cunliffe on the top. Uh, Andy Miles looks a little bit too much like he was sparring then. He was a bit relaxed in the stand-up and I think he got caught off guard. Yeah, Craig Cunliffe looked uh, very aggressive and, and used his strikes to, to set up a nice takedown. Where he's, he's, he's got his opponent pinned into the fence now, looking to land from ground and pound. Um, these two have a pro debut, so I don't know much about these fighters, but um, Andy Miles is from the famous SBG camp in Manchester. He looks very well put together. Oh. He's got a, a very bad cut under his eye, and I think that's going to be a fight stopper. It is pretty bad. He's got an cut under his left eye. Well, he, he looks in great shape. I, I wonder how much he benches. Yeah, he looks like uh, he's, he looks like a very strong, uh, a very strong fighter. He's in good condition. Um, but as you say, possibly came out a bit too relaxed. Yeah, maybe a little too relaxed. And, and, and got caught straight off the bat. You can see on the screens on the monitor, you can see how bad that cut is. It is it, it, it's quite a gas. I wonder if they've got uh, any adrenaline with the wheel to let the fight carry on. Yeah, it looks like, looks like they, they might let the fight carry on. They've locked the cage. They're they just, they just going to wipe off the excess blood. <laughs> and a white towel. I'm sure his mum will appreciate that. <laughs> Well, we'll look, from, uh, look for Andy to come out uh, miles more prepared for this round. Oh, now the both swinging bombs. Maybe Andy's trying to get one back. Yeah, someone, someone's going to get dropped. <laughs> And good call by the referee. Yeah, um, that cut was worse and the blood was going everywhere. Um, and he, he was in a, 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 a seriously inferior position. Uh, so, obviously, obviously you are, you are uh, disappointed for your, for your fighter. A shame, a, a shame for Andy Miles, but a good win for Craig Cunliffe. I'm sure Andy will be back. Thank <laughs> you. 
Very strong for his weight. He's a very strong 73 kilo fighter. Yeah, he, he does look very powerful. Um, interesting tattoo on his back. It's like the uh, Akuma sign from Street Fighter. Uh, do you want to elaborate on that, Lee? I'm not sure what that sign is. <laughs> uh, a, a computer game. Um, there's a character called Akuma in the game Street Fighter, and he's got a symbol on his back that resembles that one. Um, I don't know if it's related, but just a point of interest there. Well, at the moment we've got Danny in, uh, uh, in Chris's guard. Look for him to, to be throwing some heavy shots similar to Neil Barber, I'd imagine. Is he looking to pass guard there? Uh, we can't see too well. The, the uh, referees are obstructing our view. Obviously, uh, the fire safety is more important. Because Chris Shaw is wearing boots, does that mean he won't be able to kick up to Danny's head from the floor? Well, they're both wearing boots, is it? Yeah. Uh, Kicking to the head in boots, it's going to be illegal. Here we go. Danny looking for a nice round kick. Chris throws a punch and shoots in. He, he, but he's been caught in the guillotine. He's got an arm in to defend. Although when you've got a strong guy squeezing... Oh, he, no, he popped out, popped his head out. And he's managed to get top position with Danny now on his back. So let's see uh, Chris to look to ground and pound. Danny to look for... Uh, Submissions. Danny has got a submission win against one of the UK's top welterweights, um, Matt Thorpe, uh, a, a few years back on the uh, Ultimate Combat. He won that by armbar from, from his guard. Well, uh, I know he has got a submission. Yeah, although he although he's stacked against the fence, <coughs> he's doing the right thing by tying his opponent up and looking for submissions while keeping him tied up. Um, of course, this isn't a submission fight. This is mixed martial arts. You have to uh, tie your opponent up, or he's gonna he's gonna start punching you. We could possibly see a leg lock attack here. Uh, if, if Chris Shaw's diving on the leg. Oh, Danny's done well to reverse position. Yeah, he's showing his strength. His strength and his wrestling skill, he reversed it. Yeah. Um, and he's caught now with Chris's half guard. Yeah, he, Chris, has, Chris has pulled the half guard back. Also tying his opponent up so he can't be, can't be struck. Good tactics here. Uh, interestingly, a point to notice that the rules on uh, the case fighting championship are slightly different to the Nevada State Athletic Commission rules, insofar as there's no elbows on the floor. Um, this is a position where you might see elbows coming from a uh, from half guard position. And they have to look slightly uh, change the rules so they be more punches from that position. I think that's possibly a good rule. Um, elbows, el elbows can cause cuts and uh, possibly stop a fight prematurely. Yeah, I do. I think it makes for a more exciting fight to actually not have them. I think these rules are very good, and especially uh, the refereeing is very consistent in keeping the action going. If it stalls on the floor, they're standing back up. Yeah. It stalls against the fence, uh, they keep them going. So it makes it better for the crowd. The crowd is a, a very lively uh, um, and involved crowd, and I think it makes it a better uh, spectacle for them all. Yeah, the, the uh, refereeing, as you say, has been, been consistent, but it's, it's been very, very good so far. Um, 
Oh, and he just broke the action there. Again, as you're saying, to, to stand them back up on his left of action. Oh, nice setup for the double leg. Yeah, that was a, a textbook. Uh, Dummy to the head and, and shoot for a double. He's got the takedown, Dan, but uh, Danny's doing well to stay against the fence, though. And, yeah, and, and, and avoid being put on his back. He, he got his feet out to the side, on the same side as his hips, and he's using that to stand back up. It's called a whizzer. If you see his left arm overhooking, that's right. And then he's got managed to get the underhook with his right arm. Yeah, he, he, he's not getting. Again, showing he's, he's got that wrestling skill. He's keeping that arm locked up. He's actually decided to go to his back now. I think we're looking for a submission here. He could possibly work in a triangle. He needs to get and his left leg free. Yeah. Chris is doing a good job there of holding down his left foot to stop him able to get it round. He's done a very good job to him north south. Yeah, he's past the garden, he's got a dominant position. That was a very nice transition. But watch maybe for Danny to boost off the cage. This is where the, uh, his different submission is missing. Yeah, he's, he's powerful. Off. That's what he does. He the position and now he's got the dominant position. Just as you called it. Yeah, excellent work. Of course, we have a uh, better view of the action from up here. His, his opponent <laughs> wouldn't have seen what you were setting up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, then. that's true. I don't think his opponent knew that he had his feet climbing up the fence. Oh, he tried the, the, the same same dummy setup again, but uh, obviously, yeah, a, a little further out there, and Danny's actually caught him with a guillotine. Yeah, he was wiser this time. But uh, the, the jockey here for the takedown. Uh, Chris, Chris, Chris got the body lock, but Nucci might attempt. Failed by uh, Danny Rogerson. Yeah, which leaves Chris in mount. He's let me look, but could only use his strength to get him out. He'd maybe put himself in an armbar. He's tapping. He's, he's tapping. tapping. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I think he put himself in that by trying to get out of the position. Yeah, I think he possibly used his. Uh, he tried to use his strength too much he, and uh, neglected a technical escape there as opposed. And he, and he said he went to use a, his power to escape and put himself into a submission. Yeah, this is Sherman. He'll be kicking himself when he sees the video. But a, a great win for Chris Shaw. Um, yeah, superb. His home crowd. Chris Shaw showed some nice wrestling there. Um, but obviously got the submission and awareness. As soon as he saw the submission, he took it. Very, very good. Um, we didn't see much from either fighter on the peak, really. No, uh, there wasn't much stand-up in that fight, but they both used the, 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 their strong areas, and they were both strong in the same areas. It was good. Uh, technical back and forth was very, very close, and then as soon as one sees the, the, the submission or the, the finish, he took it. Uh, an excellent fight again. So here we go, the official, the official decision.
Welcome back to the second half. Here we've got Leslie Ojigabana against Jason Tan. Two fighters we know quite well. Um, what, what are you looking for in this fight, Lee? Well, uh, Jason, obviously a superb submission fighter. Uh, Leslie, uh, in the last few weeks we've seen him, and he's, he's put on a whole load of weight and then lost it again, like in a matter of, a matter of weeks. I'm, I'm sure that's gonna that's gonna hurt, hurt his conditioning. Yeah, I wonder how that will affect. Jason um, has got improving stand up there and looks for the shoot. Um, Leslie, I'd say if, if he's got a strong area, um, it'd be the clinch. Yeah, uh, he defended the takedown very well. It was a nice, nice pull of underhooks. Oh, and a knee, a low knee there. Yeah, no. I think that was totally accidental. Leslie didn't realise he'd done it, but it was a, a definite knee to the groin. So Jason will get a little bit of time to recover from this. Jason, nice, tight hands. Um, with a with a stand up, he wasn't really getting caught with anything. Then went for the shoot. Yeah, like, like, uh, as we say, he's got superb submission. I think that's that's his strength. That's obviously where he's going to want the, want the fight to go. Okay, so back on with the action. Oh, oh, nice, nice low kick. kick. Nice low kick there. Nice, <laughs> <laughs> uh, really uh, wary of the low. Oh, oh, a very nice head kick, Jason. Mixing up there is uh, low to high with his right uh, right leg very well. Yeah, he's been showing some, some nice striking there. Um, I'm really impressed with, with the wrestling. He, he changed level very well, but let Leslie caught him again. Yeah, we saw Le uh, Leslie last week on King Cage UK against Ross Pettifer, and he was defending the takedown very well. And he plays it. There we go. Jason gets him to the floor. Leslie looking to stand back up again, it, it looks like. Probably, probably um, a wise move given that Jason does have that superb submission skill. And Jason's got behind, uh, behind Leslie, not somewhere you want someone as good at submission as Jason. Leslie's oh, doing a good he, job he, to get his arms he, back he's turned out, yeah. He's done well there. He, he managed to get Jason off his back. And he went back into a tight clinch. He's, he's, done, he's, he's done it again. Yeah, there's another low blow there. And I think, I think he caught one to the face as well. Looking good in clinch, Jason, uh, Jason coming back there himself. Um, this is the area, like, as I said, the clinch where I'd, I'd see Leslie is probably his strongest area. Um, Jason might be a little better at from the outside of the stand up um, and, and definitely better on the floor. But um, Leslie has a good, strong clinch. And uh, it may be hard to tell from, just from, from looking at them, but anecdotally, um, it would, <laughs> um, it's been suggested that Leslie would be the physically stronger fighter. Yeah, but here he is, he's it's caught, he's a triangle. caught a triangle, and it, it, with a slick groundwork. It's not locked in yet, but it's going to be soon. It could be. The groundwork is very slick. Leslie's having to use strength there to get out. Um, that strength will only last so long, though. He won't be able to use that for the, uh, throughout yeah, the Jason's whole fight. Jason's doing a good job there of pulling the head down, keep it close so that Leslie can't use his strength to pull him up. Um, and I think that'll buy him the time to, uh, to secure the triangle, or maybe we'll see him switch to armbar. On the last case fighting championship, so I'm transitioning very well from armbar to triangle back to armbar. Unless he's just got, got his left arm in, so maybe he can't get the triangle. See if he, we'll see if he switches here. Jason's going to have to be active though, because if if Leslie, if, if Leslie can stall the action long enough, uh, Jeff, the, the, the referee, may stand them up. That's right. If there's a lull in the action, the, the referee will stand them up. So here we go. As, as expected, we've got um, Jason working the groundwork, um, uh, and Leslie keeping that top position. Jason, that's spent some time at Brazil, I believe, training uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu uh, over in, uh, in its home. Obviously the best place for it. Uh, and it shows his de dedication to his art. And so that, uh, a committed fighter to take the time to go over and stay in Brazil, um, spend time training and really uh, working the groundwork. I think he came back from there with his purple belt. And they're, still, they're still working for this triangle position. Um, and I think are we seeing Jason switch to an amber? I think he's still trying to lock in the triangle. It's hard to tell from, from our angle. Jeff Orton looking on, uh, keeping very close eye on the action. He, he looks poised and about to stand them up. So, with the two teams we've got here, we've got uh, Les, Leslie Ojibwanga uh, from Sunderland. He's got a. Uh, 
internet celebrity uh, was one in his corner there, shouting for him to stand up. Um, he's, he's from the Sunderland gym. And Jason Tanner's from Next Generation Liverpool, which is at the old Scout Shoot gym. Yeah, I believe they've got affiliation with uh, Chris Brennan, who uh, promotes the No Gee brand. Um, with Leslie being from Sunderland, uh, obviously home to the famous Ian the Machine Freeman. That's right, the, the UK's most uh, most famous fighter and most well decorated fighter. He's been in what? Five UFCs? He's actually six And here we are, there we've got uh, Jason Tan finally secures the, uh, the triangle. And he won by submission. Very, very good win from a very good fighter. Uh, Leslie did well there to, to, to defend from so long. Um, Actually, uh, playing in in, uh, in Jason's strongest area. Yeah, that, that, I mean that was that was technical. It took him a while to set it up because because Leslie is so strong and a good fighter himself. But uh, oh, yeah. he didn't give up on his submission. He he kept fighting for it and he managed to, managed to get the win. So that's two out of two for, for Jason over here at, um, at the Kids Fight Championships. Yeah, he, he's been looking very impressive. A welterweight fighter, but he, fight, he he doesn't mind fighting big guys at well uh, at middleweight. Um, he was the KJ champion on uh, middleweight. Um, he's also fought at lightweight, I believe, in America. So um, 
Paul's weight can vary. Yeah, he, he, he's fought from anywhere from 70 kilos up to 84 kilos. Anyone and everyone can be in the fight. So here we go. Um, Luciano did well there to get the takedown. Um, he's looking to pass guard. Paul, Paul on his back. Yeah, but Paul uh, initially stuffed the takedown, um, but uh, Lu Luciano fought through, put Paul on his back. Looking to pass guard, Paul but Paul's done well to get back to guard there. Oh, he's, he's passed. Oh, it's some slick groundwork there from yeah, Luciano, very fast. Fast groundwork. Uh, we'll look for Paul here to try and turn into uh, Luciano and avoid the submission. That looks on pretty tight. Got him. I think he's got him. Oh, no. He's not Paul defending well. If we, if, if, any, if we can make any criticism of Paul, it's that he sometimes takes time to warm up into his fights. Yeah, he, he, he has been a slow start in the past, but when an opponent starts fast, he, he, he has been seen to, uh, to, wake to match up. that pace, yeah. So, look for Paul here to try and turn, turn back into him. Paul's defending well. There's one thing to say, he, he won't give up. <laughs> yeah. Luciano's quick there with the. He's, very, very, he's very quick. Around to the back. Very fast and aggressive. Ve some, some vicious strikes he's trying to throw in, but uh, Paul obviously uh, no stranger to being here. Nah, he's a, such an experienced fighter. Um, he'll look for him to make this choke hard work for Luciano. Has he got, has he got his hand under the chin? Or, no, Paul's still managing to, to defend the choke there. Well, he's throwing that choke on very quickly. He throws some strikes, throws some strikes, and what? On, on goes the choke. It's very quick. Paul needs to get him off his back. Yeah, difficult when they have that body triangle, the tight body triangle. Some fighters don't like to use it, um, but when you do get it locked on, it is a it, it is a very dominant position. Yeah, it's very, very hard to break. Uh, and Paul's taking shots here, but he, he, he doesn't look overly fair. I mean, he's, as you say, he's no strange to taking shots. I think he's just waiting uh, as he goes to the choke, and he's then defending the choke. He's uh, doing his best to put his hands up and defend the, uh, the shots. Paul's defense looks interesting. He, Puts his hand under the elbow and just pushes it off. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's the benefit of having a size advantage. Yeah, and, and also he does a very good job of as soon as uh, uh, Luciano could try to put a choke around, he puts it onto his chin, gets his chin in, stops him being able to hook it underneath the throat, and then he, he's just pushing it off. Do you think uh, Paul's age is possibly a factor here? Being, 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 he looks slower than, than his, his quicker opponent. No, I think uh, Paul, Paul's. Uh, Always uh, takes a little while to get warmed in into the fight, but yeah, I mean, for someone to have a dominant position as the back for so long and not be able to finish it, shows the fight, the, 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 the caliber of the fighter who is being choked. And look at this, he's, he's pushing him off. And oh, he's tapped. He's managed to tap him, but that's, I mean, we'll say maybe a good three minutes or so there for Luciano on Paul's back. He managed to defend the two. Uh, just the same to get caught in such a dominant position so quickly. Um, Slick groundwork there from Luciano. Very impressive win.
Session. We've got um, Dion staring against Aziz Karagou. So we saw, um, we saw Aziz's uh, um, corner there, uh, similar to the corner team for the last fight, uh, a very good sharp fight. Well, um, Dion's 4-1, so he's, he's got a pretty good record, he's Dutch, so they, they usually have good striking. He is, he's been caught quickly here, can he get... Can he get the legs? You notice he's got long hair. Do you think that's hindered his vision at all? Or? <laughs> um, well, it's interesting to see the long hair coming back into MMA. Um, back well, when Eric Paulson pulled in the uh, in the UFC, um, they used to be able to pull hair. Now that the no hair pulling rules back in effect, you see the fighters actually um, uh, going back to that style. Well, we, we actually have some interesting interesting gossip on on a uh, Dion. He's been in a couple of movies. Would you like to elaborate? Um, no, I think, uh, to be honest, I don't really know too much. Oh, look, going for the back there, Aziz, moving very, very swift on the ground. Um, he looks to be the more well-conditioned fighter, at least. Yeah, and uh, he's got a very slick groundwork. Yeah, so far, he's totally do dominated this matchup. Yeah, and he's controlling the back very well. He had the back and he just got off. He's done that a couple of times. It's an interesting tactic. I wonder why he'd be standing up from the back. Well, he looks so dominant on the feet. Um, possibly he just wants to, yeah. wants to get up and trade. He does look... Uh, I mean, at the moment, we've got... Uh, Dion is just... Uh, Dion is just, um, just defending at the moment on the ground and on the stand-up. It's interesting when we get a, a lot of the European fighters over because in places like Germany and France, uh, MMA is actually illegal. So, um, yeah, so it's, they, they don't have the, maybe the experience of some of the other countries. No, but when they do come over, they're obviously some of their top guys. Yeah, that's right, that's right. I mean, they're not going to bring over um, uh, uh, low-level fighters. These guys are the best guys from their country. It's just it's, it's hard to get footage and to see what they've done before because they, they can't compete in, the, in their home countries. That's right. So we've got a little bit of a lull in the action here. I mean, uh, Aziz is just holding side control. There's not really much going on. Back to your point earlier, I believe yeah, Dion has made a couple of top shelf movies in the past. <laughs> Um, and he's not going to affect on his fight field. I thought it was an interesting point. Well, it's actually, uh, as well as that, that mirrors. Oh, oh I, I, thought, I thought possibly we had an illegal strike there. But I know he's been caught up there. As you see again, he's, um, as he's definitely wanting to stand up. Although he's dominant on the floor, he's obviously more confident in the stand up. Again, he's Dutch fighters as well, that's a surprise because the Dutch are usually very good stand up fighters. Um, his hair is definitely getting in the way. Yeah, but um, I suppose he's it, it, got a second career. Same as um, Aaron Brink, also uh, an X-rated movie star. Very dominant as he's here. I think Dion's doing, he's doing well just to hold on. Well, the hooks are in. He may look to choke. Uh, well, from the past, oh, yeah, the yeah. last two times he has looked to stand up, but now he's actually looking for the choke. From my angle, I can see the right arm around the neck already. He's, he's got a figure for it at the elbow. Lock it in. It's locked in. It should be a tap pretty soon. As if Dion can defend. Dion's doing well to defend, showing his, uh, his, his mental toughness. He has been dominated all through the fight. This is supposed to be hard mentally. Oh, he's, he's got out, he's reversed it, he's managed to get, um, get Aziz on his back. Well, let's see for Dion to now work ground and pound. I'm sure it's not the first time that he's been dominated and managed to escape. Hey, 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 hey. 
landed some good strikes, and you can see with every strike he lands, he's got his corner is screaming. so far and Dion is doing very well to uh, defend I mean that was Dion's first uh, dominant dominant position be, well, I would say dominant but in the guard on top but now um, as he is reversing very well he's looking out for an armbar oh he might, he might burn himself out he looks he looks very tired now as he's oh and here could we see a, a, a change in the tide here yeah Dion's managed to Oh, there's a bell. A good, strong into the round from Dion. Not enough to win in the round. Definitely, definitely not, but it just shows he's back in his fight. This fight isn't over by a long shot. It, it was close to being over so many times, but he held in there. He's come back. Aziz looks like uh, looks like he could be gassing. Yeah, so maybe the condition here will... Uh, will Which corner? The, neither of them look very happy. I'm not sure which corner's retired. I can't imagine as he's uh, uh, retired from such a dominant performance, but he gets toward the end of the round. Yeah, he looked like, I mean, maybe he even had an injury. Um, his corner looked very unhappy with him. Well, both corners uh, looked, looked worried in between the rounds. Uh, we'll wait for the official announcement. Minute rounds. Uh, Fatty Kokomis needs no introductions for him. Pride, Russian M1, very, very experienced fighter. Yeah, yeah, Lalani is a, uh, has a 1 0 record, uh, fighting out of France. Obviously, Fatty representing uh, the Golden Glory team, although he's actually originally from Germany, uh, Golden Glory based in Holland. So this is the referee drives at the canvas. Interesting fact, I was speaking to Yeah uh, before the fight. His uh, family are actually Fijian. And with the uh, <laughs> and the uh, main religion there being a form of voodoo. Uh, yeah. He's um, obviously he's got a Fijian strength look, uh, the, the strong upper body, the build um, uh, that you get from the, those islanders. Oh, very aggressive. Ooh, caught, very quick there. Uh, fight, maybe caught fight a little off guard there. Fight a very experienced fighter though. 
in interesting name in the English language, um, fatty, anything but, when you look at his physique. Yeah, very, very well conditioned, well experienced fighter. Uh, Pride Fight Championship uh, is actually the biggest event in the world. Uh, they have like 60,000 people in Tokyo Dome and uh, uh, Kukumis has fought off there. Oh, he gets the tear down straight into mount position. This could be horrible for uh, Yeah Lalani here. Yeah, he looks very small for the weight though. Although, yeah. although he looks strong, he does look quite small for the weight. And Fatih Kukumis is a very strong fighter for the weight as well. And he's got a dominant position, he's, he's got his opponent up against the fence. Raining down punches. And you see there where he turns him back onto the fence so he has even less room. Um, yeah, turn him away from the corner there. Yeah, uh, turn him away from the corner, sorry, so that he can, oh, and he's turning his back. Very slick move there from the ground and pound straight into the submission. Um, looking for the rear naked choke. Yeah. So far it's been great transitions. Uh, after, the, the, after the initial burst from Yaya, uh, Fatty's uh, got the takedown, got good position, ground and pound, took the back. He's now locked up the body triangle, gone from uh, the hooks into to, to a straight body triangle, a lot more dominant position, which we saw earlier. He's working some good, strong punches into the head there, just to weaken him up, looking for this chore. Yeah, uh, uh, as you mentioned earlier, the, the body triangle is very difficult to escape. Yeah. Being a very experienced boxer yourself, Ian, uh, nicknamed M16, uh, kind of seen that much striking, um, apart from possibly the first fight. No, um, I think maybe one reason for that could be the small cage. Um, it, it keeps action fast, they're going, uh, getting into clinch very, very quickly. There's not a lot of room uh, for the fighters to move around and work um, uh, a stand-up skill. Uh, as a pro MMA fighter yourself, um, how does the M16 feel about a smaller cage? Um, I, think, I suppose it, it would be... Dependent on the game plan, I suppose. It's a difficult one to answer. Um, as a grappler, I do you think it's a, um, um, an advantage to have a smaller cage? You are, um, personally, I find that, like, a, as a grappler, as you say, uh, being predominantly grappling-based, um, it forces the action to be clinched a lot quicker. Which is obviously an advantage. Which, which is what we've seen in the fights today. Yeah, um, it, it can possibly um, stifle a striker. Although, uh, when we saw uh, is it Terry Etim earlier on in the first fight, a, a very rangy fighter, and he, and he, he, used, it, he used it well. I, th I think the difference in that fight was that Neil Barber was, uh, was willing to stand up. In a fight where you've got a, 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 a grappler wrestler against a striker, um, they get a great opportunity here. Oh, they've got a brilliant choke there. Uh, the side head lock choke. Similar to Rene Kitobi, didn't he? Uh, uh, you don't get a hand on the back. Can you explain the difference over there, Lou? Yeah, uh, with the classic Rene Naked choke, it actually refers to any choke that doesn't use a gi, uh, hence the term naked. Uh, although it's generally referred to as what they call the mataleon, where they figure for the arms. So, uh, in fact, he did get a rear naked choke behind the guy and he did choke him without his sleeves. Um, commonly referred to as a bulldog, a bulldog choke, uh, where you, when you don't figure for the arms. So, there, uh, 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 a good solid win for uh, Fatih Kukamis, um, a brave performance by Ye Ye Lalani.
Vader in the last case fighting championships. Um, he's, he's got a job on here with a guy who aptly named the Monster. What are your thoughts? Well, they fought before. Uh, Manos uh, being Dutch, having a great stand up uh, background. It's but uh, Paul took everything that he threw at him and, and laughed in the last fight. Right. Ooh. A very fast, sharp kick for someone uh, uh, of, of his size. Paul's got a bad head at the first few exchanges, though. Paul's got very good boxing, but uh, I believe he's a better he's a better grappler. I, I believe he's a far better grappler than Manoff. Yeah, well, that was a solid kick, but Paul got the clinch. Uh, looking at, to, to get the double underhooks. The, the only worry would be Paul has, Paul sometimes, unless he can get carried away with him, and he wants to stand with people, and he can definitely outgrapple them. Uh, uh, he, he had the head of granite and he does punch really, really hard. Yeah, and, and there you saw the actual the, the skill as well. He uh, never got the better of the exchanges with the fists. So there was a couple of kicks went in. Um, the first one uh, just just slightly missed, and the second one uh, Paul used for a single leg. Uh, he keeps his chin down. He, he, he's visibly marked up under his left eye already. That just shows the power of man off the thing. Shows you the chin of granite there because that he kick kicked that well. Knocked out a, a lesser opponent. Bob Moon just took a massive right kick to the, uh, to the head. He's still, he's still a little shaking here. I think, has he gone? Has he gone? Could he get a good fight back? He's still on his feet. He's still on his feet and none of those shots are landing cleanly. But can he fight back? He's covering up well. He's covering up well. But I think this should be up in, in just a minute. The no shot gone in. No, the referee Jeff Hall's had to jump in. Paul, uh, visibly upset with the, with the result, but he was taking some heavy shots there and he wasn't able to come back. Uh, but, man off the, uh, overwhelming him there with the combinations. Well, he, he's still standing and although uh, although he wasn't firing back, Paul doesn't look that bad. Amazing that he was slowing the shots he was taking there. He was covering up well. Uh, some big shots going in. And now the man off. As his nickname suggests, he's a monster of a man. Um, Paul looks fine there in the corner, just congratulating Melvin. Well, as we said last time, uh, Paul definitely needs to think about, about dropping his weight. Um, these guys he's fighting, they're huge compared to him. Um, I know he's got like so much heart and he wants to fight the biggest and the best guys. But um, well, I think he was originally uh, matched up to fight a middleweight fight in Lu David Loiseau. Oh. Um, but th this was a, a last minute plan, so he was actually aiming to fight at the light weight, which is why I think there's a, a more significant uh, difference in weight between the two. But it shows Paul's heart to, uh, to take a fight against uh, such, such a formidable and physical opponent at uh, short notice. That's right. And with regards to Manoff, he looked very explosive for such a big guy. <laughs> A bit of horseplay afterwards. <laughs> 